Hi, I'm Stephen Whittier. I'm the founder and chief instructor of SBG East Coast, Straight Blast Gym East Coast. So uh, when we're talking about the program, we have all facets. Um, essentially, when I was starting out, I had already earned uh, fairly high ranks in some more traditional martial arts like karate, and um, I did some uh, Filipino martial arts, Jeet Kune Do, which was the martial art that uh, Bruce Lee kind of developed. And then when I first discovered Jiu Jitsu, I did it essentially just as a, with the intention of having it be a supplement to the other martial arts that I was learning. And I'd seen the original UFCs with Hoist Gracie and things like that. And like a lot of people who got into Jiu Jitsu at that time, I was fascinated by it, but I didn't understand it. But after I did Jiu Jitsu for a very short period of time, uh, and just the same as when I first discovered Muay Thai and things like that, Muay Thai kickboxing, um, they left such an impression on me that I knew I had to go down that road and pursue them because this was the truth. This was the more efficient and effective way to do things when it came to self-defense. But even when it comes to sort of the journey of personal development, I knew that if I really wanted to put my energy and passion into learning a martial art, I wanted to do the thing that was the most authentic, the least amount of theory and really have um, the beauty and the function be one and the same. So my goal was to be able to learn these arts and then also be able to pass them on to others, not just people who wanted to be competitive necessarily and you know be fighters or things like that, but really to anybody because these are martial arts that we literally have students from three or four years old all the way through into their late 60s and 70s actively training and learning. So first and foremost, um, I'll show some techniques from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. This is a uh, a martial art. Um, I would argue that if you had to have one martial art when it comes to, especially if it comes to just hand-to-hand -hand without weapons, which is a is another uh, discussion, but if it had to be one martial art hand-to-hand, -hand, uh, this would be the one that I would recommend for self-defense because out of all the arts, uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or Gracie Jiu-Jitsu is the one that comes the closest to embodying what is really the goal or the uh, ideal of all the martial arts and that's to be able to use superior technique and leverage against somebody to overcome them even if they have super, uh, superior physical attributes to you. Okay, Jiu Jitsu allows you to actually do that in the real world as opposed to just in theory. So uh, with that said, we'll go over a few very common scenarios that you'd see in a self-defense situation. Okay, so um, let me bring out Bob here. Um, Bob's one of our purple belts here in the program. And uh, first thing we'll talk about is just kind of like a common situation, which would be somebody throwing a haymaker sucker punch, right? It happens all the time. Sometimes it will be um, literally a sucker punch where somebody just all of a sudden makes a move towards you and throws a punch because they're trying to surprise you with it. Um, there's other times when there may be like both people are throwing punches and you'll see the traditional like both of us grabbing kind of throwing punches at each other. You see all these types of situations but the main thing is that when you are not trained people tend to try and both strike and almost move their head away at the same time which means we're doing what we call looking over the fence. It's a boxing term. So when you look over the fence you present your head you're trying to lean back away from the strikes and that's where you're likely to get caught. And the thing that we don't want to have there isn't just getting hit, it's you don't want to go unconscious in a self-defense situation because that's where somebody can do whatever they want to do, the time when you're actually not able to defend yourself at all. So our big thing is to make sure we stay conscious and stay in the game. It's not necessarily to be able to beat somebody up, it's to be able to survive the situation and go home. So what we talk about here is we either want to be all the way out, meaning if we could run, that's great, if we could create a lot of distance between ourselves and our opponent, that's great. You know, pick up chairs, throw things at them. But if the strike is imminent, I either want to be outside of Bob's range or I want to be all the way in close where his punches and his ability to hold on to me and hit me becomes less important or less um, meaningful, right? So even if it may hurt, it's not going to actually knock me out and do damage. And so from here, you have this general, uh, what we call a fighting measure, this distance. So right now, I kind of know that if Bob were to extend his arm that is closest to me, which right now is his lead, see, I'm already a few inches out of range. That gives me timing. So the more distance, the better, but I know I'm at least out of, out of range and the first thing I want to do from here is position myself so that I'm not, uh, like I know if he says I'm going to beat you up, 
I know if he says if I'm gonna, I'm going to beat you up that he's about to throw a punch, right? But if I'm not sure what his intentions are, I'm not gonna show fists and everything like that in like a fighting stance, but I am gonna position myself so even if I'm saying, hey, how's it going like this, like, cause I'm like, do I know you? I still wanna make sure that I look non-threatening, but I'm ready to intercept. The other thing I'll do very subtly is right now, Bob and I are completely lined up. So I may just casually move myself slightly offline. Now, if all of a sudden Bob were to throw that punch, good, I can come in. And what I'm going to do is come in with my arms and my head so that I make contact and I'm inside and then I can attach to his body where he can't really hit me. So I'm on the end of those punches where it would be like getting, um, hitting a baseball on the end of the bat. That's where all the power is, the most inertia. I want to be inside that in close. So from here, okay, maybe talking with my hands. All of a sudden Bob goes for a punch. Good. So I come in and now here's where I can come in for a body lock is what we call. So I'm attaching. Now, even if he's really strong, even if he could shake me all around, when I get in close like this, okay, I can make this much more difficult for him. Okay? Right now, if he tries to hit me with this arm, okay, I'm kind of controlling it in here, hugging on to him. If he's trying to throw me around a little bit, we'll talk about that in a second, but I'm just keeping my base. You'll notice my head is underneath his jaw and my posture is good. So I'm only bending my legs now, I'm not really bending my back. So I'm kind of cutting off half of his body. And if he wanted to hit me with this arm, it's going to be very hard to do any damage because see how my head is kind of hidden in here. Now, what I don't want to do is to try and fight him back with physical force. So if I tried to all of a sudden grab a hold of Bob and like pick him up and throw him to the ground, that would only work if I were physically strong enough to do it in relation to his strength and his body mass. So instead what you'll notice is, I'll just pick one, one of many possibilities here, is I'm just going to overtake his center of gravity. Okay, and we can adapt all these movements to people who are of different sizes. But right now, um, Bob and I being like close to the same weight, he's just a little bit heavy. I'm a little taller, he's a little heavier than me. I'm just going to walk in and you'll notice how without me having to use any power, I can overtake his base for an easy takedown where I can get into a position to control him. So once I'm in this position, okay, from here, watch. I'm gonna walk in and you'll see how my hips kind of move his legs where all of a sudden he's kind of light on his legs from here, okay? And if I tried to come in and pick him up, nothing's going to happen and this is where he might actually toss me to the ground. So from here I'm just sticky. I'm just making connection to him, not strength. And now watch what happens, okay? So kind of uh, hanging there, Bob, like fight it a little bit, good. So you see like even as he braces himself, once I overtake his base, and create a lot of connection on his body. His legs just go out from under him, his feet become very light, and now a little twist, and he trips and falls to the ground. And I'm in a position here where I can control his arms so he can't hit me, he can't poke me in the eyes, and I can easily continue to resolve the situation from there. All right, now let's talk about kind of a, an old school classic, pretty much, at least all the, all the men out there or teenagers, if you look back, somebody's done this to you, I'm sure, whether it's your brother or a friend or somebody that was actually trying to beat you up back in school, everybody's been headlocked, okay? Happens all the time, incredibly common in street fights um, or self-defense situations. It's just instinctual to grab somebody's head. The difference is when you know what to do, um, you can protect yourself quite easily and, and whoever has this, even if you wind up with your neck a little sore from the initial grab, um, you will be out, you will be in a superior position. And the, the most they can do if they're way bigger and stronger than you is just hold on and squeeze your head. But if you know how to defend yourself, they're not gonna be able to do anything more to you and you will get out. So from here, we're gonna start. This is one of those, maybe Bob's just bigger, he comes up and grabs me and then he yanks me down to the ground or an ambush type of self-defense situation, you know, like you're in the proverbial uh, VFW hall or bar or something like that. All of a sudden somebody doesn't like your face and they come up and they grab you and they twist you to the ground. Then what happens, okay? So from here, Bob's gonna come up and he's gonna grab me. Good, he's gonna pull me down. And we wind up here, okay? So let's just move towards the camera. So you notice that when I hit the floor, this is where I always wanna wind up on my side, not flat on my back. And the reason is because now I have 
everything I need to launch an escape. So Bob can go ahead and squeeze my head really hard, but what I'm doing is here, I'm turning my chin into him, so it's just compression. It's a little uncomfortable, but it's not that bad. If my chin were down here, if I'm totally flat to the mat like this, it becomes more of a problem, so I always fall on my side. Now, you say, well, what if you were gonna hold me really hard with one arm and then he's gonna punch me with the other, so that's why I do this. So right now, if Bob goes to punch me with that free hand, go ahead, okay? Now, I'm not arm wrestling with him. I'm just using his own grip to keep that nice and close, nice connection. I can always help out with this arm too if he's very strong. But when you do this, it's incredibly hard for him to actually release his grip. So now I'm kind of freeing him into space. Now what I don't want to do from here is start bucking and pulling and fighting, okay, because Bob, if he's, if he's big and strong enough to wrestle me down to the floor like this, he's probably big and strong enough to pin me. So what I'm gonna do is move my body to where he isn't, right? So from here, I'm gonna move my legs out and away from him. So if you see what's going on right now, okay, kind of in this position, I'm just evacuating out with my hips and my legs and making some space. And once I do that, a little kick of my legs here and watch what happens to Bob. He tips and falls into that open space, he can't help it. Just a tiny bit of momentum will do that. Now from here, what I don't want to have him do, again if he's much stronger, is to roll me over and wind up on top. So as he goes to do that, I just base my hands out like this, okay? Now if he wanted to let go, great, I'll just leave. But if he tries to roll me, this will keep me from being rolled. So what I'm going to do from here is base out, and now I take my time, and I throw this leg over, okay? And now I've achieved what we call the mounted position. The key here now is for me not to throw my neck out and hurt myself by trying to power out, because he's too strong for that, and his arms are linked. So I don't want to try and press like this. Instead, the harder he wants to hold, the more I'm going to give him my forearm, okay? So I put it across his throat, I bring this in, and I just lean all my weight on him, okay? And I'll just take as long as I need to, okay, once I know I have good base, he squeezes, I just lean into him with that bony ridge of my forearm until he lets go. As soon as he lets go, now I can pull my head out. And in jujitsu, we have the opportunity here to also not just escape, but to finish. So right now, this is what we call an arm bar, which is a joint lock, where I can hyperextend his elbow. And in training, we can do this very safely because all he needs to do is tap. Okay, when he feels the pressure, we let go, he tries again. In real life, if I needed to, I could always break the elbow. Okay. Let's look at one more situation. Even if you've never heard of this position and you're not familiar with jujitsu, this happens all the time in fights. Um, you'll see certain types of things happen over and over again. We've already gone over a couple. Sucker punch, or haymaker punch, grab and punch, headlocks. This position, once somebody's been knocked down, it's instinctual. The person who knocked the other one down will jump on top of them, sit on top of their stomach or their chest, and from here, either sometimes try and choke them, um, in some situations, it's more about like kind of power, and um, this happens a lot when uh, larger men are trying to control women, uh, which is why this type of training is, is incredibly useful for that. And then in fights a lot, like full-on fights where there's fists, fists and things involved, people from here will also try and punch, okay? So it's always an interesting experiment to run this which we do uh, you know, quite frequently, where you show somebody a before and after. First before, I just did this the other day with somebody who was brand new. I got in this position, which is, for me, it's called mount. For Bob, it's called mounted position. And I said, okay, what would you do to try and escape from here? And as per usual, the person tried to use a lot of strength, pushing on me, flailing, bucking their hips, trying to roll. And everything they did um, positionally would not be very effective because I know how to maintain my base on here. And then what we'll show is how to get out using almost no energy at all, such that if you have a 250 pound man trying to pin a woman who's 100 pounds lighter, they will escape, okay? And in the beginning it feels a bit like magic, but it's not a parlor trick, it's actually just applying physics and leverage in the right place at the right time. So we'll go ahead and switch. And for now, I'm gonna show this without strikes, but we also learn how to deal with it if somebody is trying to hit you from top, okay? So first thing, a lot of times people immediately wanna reach up and start to push, 
What that's gonna do is give Bob the opportunity to immediately attack my arms or my neck for a choke or an arm lock. So what I actually wanna do is use my elbows down here because if I can keep Bob over my hips, I can bump my hips, use what's called an upa, and unbalance Bob, right? So by keeping him down here all the time and not letting my elbows come out of position, I develop that discipline right off the bat. So I make sure he's always vulnerable to being unbalanced. So from here, what I can do sometimes, um, say if he's up like this, maybe I wanna get his hands a little bit closer to me if he's not already trying to grab me and choke me. Okay, if Bob were to try and grab me and choke me, this makes it easy for me to trap one of his arms. But if not, sometimes I'll just give a little bump like this, his arms go to the mat. Either way, if I can trap an arm from here, I'm golden. So I lock that in, notice my elbow comes right back to where we talked about. So if Bob tries to advance up my body, he runs into my elbows. Now from here, this is where a lot of people make the mistake. Even if they trap an arm, they try and do a big heave, like a big power motion, and roll their partner over. And if he knows how to keep his balance, it won't work. Now watch what I'm gonna do from here, okay? All I'm gonna do is bring my legs up so I can lift my hips as high as possible, and I'm going to move my head out of the way. Okay, so if I trap this arm, I wanna make sure Bob can't put this arm out for base and catch his balance. So I move my head out of the way, I've trapped his arm, now what I'm gonna do is look up over my head. Not over here, but all the way up here. And you'll notice, even if Bob tries to use this free arm to come across and keep his balance, once I have all these pieces in place, it will be impossible for him to do it. Good. So now I roll over, now I'm on top and I've controlled his arm, so if he wanted to try and hit me, or he wanted to try and go for a choke or something, he'll be unable to do it. And now I can start to work my escape from this position. Now let's look at one other position in jiu-jitsu that's arguably the most important of all because it presupposes that you've been put from a standing position all the way down to the floor on your back in what you would think would be the most vulnerable situation where somebody can get on top of you <clears throat> and um, use their body weight on you, or someone can uh, you know, hit you and they have gravity on their side and everything. So uh, in jiu-jitsu, they've really taken the time and the energy over decades to develop what's called the guard position. That means using your legs as opposed to your arms to control your opponent. Okay, so when I'm on my back like this in a disadvantage, I use my legs and there's different ways to do that. Um, I could either have my legs wrapped around Bob, which again, even if people don't know jujitsu, is very instinctual when one person lands on top of the other. And the other is when my legs are open like this and I can actually use them as an obstruction between us. Right now I'm gonna show you a very simple but very effective way from here where let's say Bob tackled me, for instance. I land on the mat from here and he's starting to put weight on me. Now, there's lots of things I can do from here. I can even do submissions like chokes and arm locks and shoulder locks, things uh, to Bob with my legs. But right now, what I want you to look at is just, what if he tried to punch me, okay? So if he tries to punch me, again, I'm right on the end of that position. So from here, I'm thinking self-defense again. So all I'm gonna do is you see how I've made a connection to his body with my top leg, okay? I use that as a barrier, but he can still reach. So now all I'm going to do from here is extend my body away like this, okay? Very simple motion. So now I'm out here on my shoulder. I've slightly lifted my hips, just a tiny bit. You almost can't see it, but I've transferred weight onto Bob. And now watch what happens. Very interesting. If Bob goes to hit me, okay, he's short. But look, go to hit me, okay? Can I hit him? Yes, okay? Now I'm not gonna do a ton of damage because I don't have gravity on my side like this, but what I can do is make him think twice about trying to close that distance. So very interesting, right, that I can make myself very long, Bob can't reach, but yet I can still reach him. And then from here, okay, as Bob goes to hit, okay, I have the opportunity to maybe trap an arm here. And now again, if I just try and muscle Bob over, it's not gonna work. So you'll see what I do from here. This is the most important pr principle in all of jiu-jitsu. It has to do with leverage, and it's called connection. So the more connection you have, the less strength you need, which is why we have people uh, all the way from three years old into their 70s that train with us, right? So I make this connection, and now instead of trying to use a lot of power to knock Bob over, all I'm going to do is kind of create a slide rule action here where I'm connecting here and connecting here. And all of a sudden from here, right, Bob tries to keep his base, okay? See, I'm able to knock him over, come right up on top. 
into a dominant position. Um, I'm very proud of the fact that, you know, many years we've won awards for not just best martial arts uh, in the region and in the town, but also for uh, best health and fitness center, best weight loss center, things like that. And I think the real reason is because we've been able to have such a unified tribe where we have uh, kids starting from three or four years old in age-specific programs moving up through the ranks. Uh, we have adults who are mostly interested in fitness, we have adults who are mostly interested in self-defense, uh, building confidence. We have adults who want to compete. It's a small percentage, but we have some. But they are all, we have tracks for everybody. So they all come in, most of them as day one beginners in our introductory program where they don't understand anything about these arts, they have no prior experience, and we take them from A to B, from B to C, and put them in the appropriate program for them. And then you just see that what starts off as sort of a, an interest for people like I'd like to try that someday and then they finally come in, turns into a passion for so many that becomes a lifelong passion. So all the sports that we see that comprise, like so there's individual sports and then the most popular one being mixed martial arts which is popularized by the UFC. Um, that popularity, because it's the fastest growing sport in the world, has certainly helped. Um, at the same time, sometimes there's a, so there's general awareness and, and a, a lot of passion there. Because it is a full contact sport, it also will repel some people and they don't understand. They think that like sometimes mistakenly everything we do is that. Like I don't want to do that or I don't want to put my kids in that. They don't realize that we have, um, you know, uh, much different ways to bring people along than just doing mixed martial arts. Um, but all the martial arts that comprise uh, mixed martial arts, the UFC, um, whether it's uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Muay Thai kickboxing, uh, wrestling, things like that, those are all martial arts that we are, are, that we embrace here, that we teach. And people can train those at any different intensity level relative to the goals that they have. Uh, another misconception is that this is just for young athletic males. Uh, we have a lot of women training here now, which I'm really proud of. Actually, uh, one of um, the most um, the most accomplished competitors in the area is actually one of my um, five foot tall uh, women students who's not even in her 20s, she's in her 30s, she's a mom, uh, she's a professional and um, you know she's won the Pan Ams in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu um, it just came back from you know winning the New York Open as a brand new brown belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu like really really accomplished and um, but again we have women of all different ages, you know women um, up into their mid 50s that train here and so it's great to see that because it just shows, again, this is a universal undertaking for people. It, it has universal appeal. So when it comes to kids, um, when you, every martial art talks about building things like self-discipline, confidence, leadership qualities. Um, when it comes to our program, like we've proven time and time again that if you're going to develop confidence, develop authentic confidence. Like our kids have no theory in what they're practicing here. There's no prearranged movements where they're doing forms and katas like this, things like I used to do when I was first starting out. Um, and uh, building confidence like that, like they actually get to train very safely with their training partners in a controlled environment and know exactly what they can do and what they can't do. They have a ton of fun, but they learn so much about themselves in the process. And we also have a leadership program with them, so we're actually teaching things like healthy lifestyle, how to take responsibility for others' progress. Um, we have a junior instructor program for our kids where we actually teach them how to teach, which now the emphasis goes from them uh, in their understanding individually to helping others get better. And that in turn makes them better students and athletes as well. So yes, uh, if you're checking this out, we would love to see you. Um, if you are of the age of about, uh, well, a very mature three-year-old and up, basically the sky's the limit, uh, we have something for you. Um, Jiu-Jitsu classes, kickboxing classes, a women-only fitness class um, that we have as well. Uh, yes, we do straight fitness as well. Um, kids classes, age-specific, all different levels. If you are worried that you have, are too out of shape and you need to get in shape first, 
you're putting the cart before the horse, right? We will put you in a class where it is non-physically demanding in the beginning and we will bring you along and we will get you in shape as you start to learn. 